I'd like to read to you from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, reading from verse 8, and it says, There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel says to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He's the Messiah, he's the Lord. And he's going to be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And he goes on to then to verse 15. It says, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Jesus then, he's just been born, and the shepherds have this visitation from this heavenly being, and they head down then into the nearby town. When we visited the shepherd's field, you can see Bethlehem in the distance, and there's a, a wonderful wood-turning shop there. That's what we've got. Oh, look at that. Now I've got a great book, it's called uh, The Gospel Parallels. There you go. So Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels, and Mark was the first one, uh, the Gospel of Immediacy. So it says immediately Jesus went here and immediately Jesus went there. It says immediately 40 times approximately. So there's no copyright in those days, so Matthew and Luke, they took all of Mark's work. But they said, well, this is how we saw it. And uh, we don't even know if they actually met up with each other. So Matthew's got some great parables, and Luke was the physician, maybe better educated, and he's more interested in the miracles. John is the spiritual gospel, quite different to what we call the synoptic gospels are similar. So any story then from the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke are in here. And we've got the death of Jesus on the cross and Matthew tells a story, Mark, shortened version, and then we've got Luke's account. But the brilliance of this is Luke's account has a little bit more of the story in it. And Luke describes how Jesus had two criminals either side of him. 2.33, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So that's to the Roman soldiers who just crucified him. And they cast lots to divide. And, uh, one of the criminals starts to have a go at Jesus. Incredible, really, considering the position that they are in. And it says, uh, he kept deriding him, saying, aren't you the Messiah, this, this chosen one? Save yourself and us, exclamation mark. But the other one tells him off. And this, this is brilliant from Luke. He says, do not fear God, since you're under the same sentence of condemnation. We are indeed have been condemned justly, and we are getting what our deeds deserve. So these are two criminals. And this one is saying, we deserve this, but this man hasn't. But this is where Luke, as his brilliance, he says, this man says to Jesus, and he says to the, well, he says to the other criminal, this man has done nothing wrong. This man. Now, I normally, if not wearing my wedding ring, which I'm not at the moment, I usually hang it over there in my front window, and it, it just it looks like a crown actually, like a king's wearing a crown, so that's how this piece normally sits in my office. Then he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Luke finishes this, he says, Jesus says, truly I tell you, today you're going to be in paradise with me. And that is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So the two criminals then, and this one, in two sentences, he goes from being lost 
to whatever it's like at the end of our lives to being saved. Fantastic, just two sentences. He admits that Jesus has done nothing wrong. And then he says, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He sees Jesus as this perfect person dying for the, the sins of the world. And he acknowledges him as the son of God, as the saviour. And what we've got down here, three days later, Jesus rose again. And that's the, the tomb there and the rock rolls over and it's the gospel message. God bless you, the Lord he loves you, and you have a great day.